Hey, Wilson, check this out, man. This just came in. I got a new sound bar, baby. I was on Amazon the other day and I saw they had Dolby Atmos sound bars for like $350. This is a Vizio. And I was thinking to myself, I just got this home theater set up, man. I got the Sony HTA 5000 with the, you know, the big subwoofer and the Sony uh, Dolby Atmos speakers. And I'm thinking they're doing this for $350 at Vizio. I got to hear what this sounds like. So right here, we got the Vizio M series 5.1.2 soundbar. We got the soundbar itself plus a subwoofer plus two rear Dolby Atmos speakers. So we got to see what this sounds like. It all comes in the box. $350. Let's get this thing open, man. Let's, I, I'm ready. So I'm not going to hook this up here at the studio uh, to give a decent comparison. You know, I got to hook it up at home. So we're going to take this joint home. I just want to see what it looks like because we can do better lighting here at the studio. But man, these boxes are so complicated. It's like Tetris. What? In, don't it look like a Tetris block, dude? <laughs> OK, wait, I got another piece of tape right here and another one right here. Who thought of this box? Why couldn't they just? Uh, anyways. All right, man, I really don't know who engineered how these boxes are made and how the parts are supposed to go in there, but this is nuts, all right? Let's get this open, throw that to the side. Got your sub right there. All right, what do we have? Uh, let's look at the sound bar first. Let's open this up, see what this looks like. See, the thing with sound bars is, it's just not an attractive piece of tech. It's just a big black bar sitting on your entertainment stand. Man. They definitely want you to unpack this once. Ripping everything up. All right, let's get that out of there. This is, this is nice. It feels good. So you got your upward firing speakers here. I don't know if they're here or not, but oh, I can definitely feel the grills here. So you got some uh, front firing left and right. I got a center channel right here, maybe two center channels. And then uh, you got your upwards, and then you got another one over here. Anything on the outside? Nah, nothing on the outside. Oh, but this is important. So you got your interface up top, you got your power, input, Bluetooth. Then you got, of course, your Dolby Atmos and Dolby DTX. But this is gonna be important, man. It says peel here. All right, got some kind of input there. It's like a 3.5 millimeter, but I'm looking for the ports. Show me the ports, because I need eARC support, man. That's very important to me. Dude, where are the ports. We got the HDMI in right there. And then we got the HDMI out, which is the eARC. Then we have an optical input right there. And we got a USB right there. And uh, anything else? I don't think we have. Nah, nothing else. That's it, man. All right. Now let's get into let's cover this back up real quick. Oh, screw it. <laughs> let's put this on the couch. This is a good looking sound bar, though. It's not black. It's more of a charcoal color. And it has like techie things on it unless you know that the the speakers the atmos speakers are there they're kind of bragging about it all right speaking of atmos let's look at one of these drivers here these are a lot smaller than i thought they were actually going to be i thought they were going to be pretty big actually so let's just see what they look like this is clean vizio this is kind of nice man it's kind of nice right here on the bottom you got four little pads right so they should be set like this so I'm guessing it's not rear Atmos. I'm guessing these two upward firing speakers on the soundbar itself are where the Atmos comes from. And the rear speakers are just rear satellite speakers because it's not facing upward. Now let's take a look at this subwoofer. I love saying it like that, subwoofer. Got a little weight to it, got a little girth. Okay. All right, this is, all right, I don't know what size this is. Probably a four inch or six inch sub we're working with here. All right, nice and compact. You could probably get away with tucking this under a couch if you are if you have a cavity in there, but definitely on the side of your couch or the side of your entertainment system. And it's a good looking sub, man. You got your port right here. I'm assuming this is the rear of it. It's gotta be the rear because the inputs are right there. So you got your port, you got your sub on the bottom, and then you got your on and off switch, and you got your surrounds that plug into it. Okay, so, you got these coaxial cables that plug in for your sound or for your surround sound. So it looks to be that the surround or the, the rear satellite speakers are gonna plug in here and they're gonna get their power and sound out of the sub. That's an interesting 
setup. All right, Wilson, we done made a mess here, man. Let's, well, first of all, before we leave, we gotta see what this comes with because I need to know if I'm gonna have to stop at the store and maybe get an HDMI cable or something for us to hook this up because usually things come, you know, everything comes in the box. Oh, wow, okay, we got all the stuff. We got power plug for the sound bar and for the, um, for the subwoofer. And then these are the cables I was talking about for the satellite speaker. So I guess this is where they're gonna get their power and sound from. That's cool that they included that and it's done this way. I've never really seen that before. What is this? Okay, they do give you a nice HDMI cable. It says premium high speed HDMI. Then you got some, oh, you can hang this joint on the wall if you want to, bro. So you can just hang it underneath the TV. That's clean and yeah, okay. So if you got your TV hanging, might as well hang that sound bar underneath it. And then of course, how you put this back in here? Then of course you have a remote. Let's take a, let's take a look at this remote, man. Remotes are important. All right, looks like you got a digital display on this bad boy. All right, typical remote. You got your directional pad right there, input and all this other good stuff on there. So you can use this with any TV, not just a Vizio. I have a Sony TV at home and I have a projector. So let's take it to the house, man, and see how this thing is gonna sound with my setup. And this is not a, gonna be a comparison video to the Sony A5000, but I just wanna see like, is there a big difference between like what would be like a $2,500 system versus this $350 box kit. So let's roll, man. Help me pack this stuff up, man. Put the camera down. All right, guys, come on in here, man. I got Wilson to help me set this up. Appreciate you, Wilson. All right, look, man, look. We spent $350 on sale, uh, not on sale. It's probably in the lower 400s. And I feel like I'm getting that much sound and sound quality. Uh, and I'm saying that because I've listened to a system for the last, I don't know, month and some change that was, you know, a little bit more high end. Oh, by the way, this is Raylan. He's, he scratched his neck right now. Dude, you got to do that on camera right now? Like the people, yeah, I got company, man. Okay, chill. Anyways, so I got the, uh, the rear surround sound speakers. They are not rear Atmos, and that's what I want to get into. These are just rear surround sound speakers, okay? They're in the back on the left and the right, and they, they're not powered speakers either. It's just a coaxial cable that plugs right into the back of the sub, and then you run that cable to the, um, to the, uh, to the back of the, uh, the rear speaker, the surround speaker, and you're just plugging it in via RCA jack or RCA cable. And then you plug in the, the powered sub and that's where the sub, the sub is actually right behind me, right behind the couch. Then of course I got the sound bar right at the TV right there. And if you look over, you can see I'm watching, uh, what is this Wilson? Uh, six underground? Yeah, six underground. So six underground on Netflix. Hey Wilson, don't get too much of that, man. Cause YouTube is strict on their copyright stuff. You don't want to give me flag, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but six underground or actually Netflix is a place where you can actually get what you're asking for, which is 4k, which is Dolby Atmos, which is uh, Dolby vision. They actually uh, give it to you. If you're using an app like max or Humu or even like Peacock, you get what you get. It could be 1080p, uh, just regular Dolby or whatever. Uh, Amazon is another place where you can get Dolby Vision and, uh, you know, true 4K and Dolby Atmos and stuff like that. So be careful when you're testing for stuff like this, using the content, especially like streaming. But the place where I like to go do a real test, and that's what I did with this. I, of course, I'm watching uh, Six Underground. I played Transformers. But a place where I like to go, uh, Wilson, check this out. Uh, I got a Bravia TV, a Sony Bravia TV. So I went to this Bravia Core app, which is it's got some really great content on here. If you watch my videos before on soundbars and stuff, this is where you can go to get, like, this is streaming. This is a Sony streaming service. It's only available on Bravia devices. And you can get, like, what is this? Uh, IMAX enhanced content. And what this equals is basically DVD quality sound and picture, okay? You're getting true streaming here. So what I did was, to test out this sound, I did this Dolby Atmos IMAX enhanced um, demo they have here. I'm not gonna really let you hear it because you can't hear surround sound through my microphone, but this is a visual effect that it does and it gives you all the sounds. It gives you the true bass that you're gonna get from true streaming like a DVD or Blu-ray. I, I said DVD earlier, I meant Blu-ray quality. So it's gonna give you the real sound that you could get uh, as you're streaming. So we'll see Spider-Man flying and typically, you would hear Spider-Man flying and you would hear the wind, right? Just kind of, 
and then he goes under the bridge and then you actually feel like you kind of want to duck your head because you know you're seeing him fly under the bridge and then look hurry up hurry up look 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 there he is okay so that's spidey it's not a bridge my bad it's the this between these two buildings so when you're listening to this right there that particular part right there like I said, I wasn't gonna do a comparison with the Sony soundbar, but when you have the Sony Dolby Atmos speakers in the rear, they have rear Atmos. And, that, and what that means is you're actually gonna get four points of Atmos. So you're gonna get the upward sounding stuff in the front and on the left and right and on the rear, left and right. So it kind of, it, it creates like a sphere around you. Whereas with this uh, Vizio soundbar setup, it sounds great, but you're only getting Atmos from the front. So you're not really trapped in as far as Atmos is concerned. You don't get that full sphere around you. And what I'm really getting is kind of loud surround sound. You're definitely getting surround sound, okay? It's around you, but it's just, it's just loud surround sound. The bass is solid. You do have to crank it up a notch. I noticed that with my previous sound bar, you know, 30 was about as high as I could go, maybe 35 if I want to get extra loud. Uh, with this one, I'm having to turn it up to like 60, what was it? 55 to 65 ish Wilson yeah so you will have to turn it up quite a bit but you're still getting solid sound and if, if I was gonna pay 350 which I did I would have to limit my expectations to a 350 uh, dollars sound bar setup this is a complete kit so and I was telling Wilson like I've had experiences where you know I, I bought something kind of on sale or at a lower price and then, you know, I, I see what I got for my money and I'm like, all right, this is fair. But for what I really want, I think I'm gonna have to spend more money. And that's what I would say about this soundbar. It's a good quality soundbar. Looks great. I like the look of it. I like that, you know, how it's got that panel up top. I like the sleekness of the, uh, the rear speakers. Come around here, Wilson. Let's, let's look at this one right here. So this speaker is super sleek. Typically when you have like satellite speakers and stuff, they take up quite a bit of room and like these you can actually hide. You know what I'm saying? You can just put it right there if you want to and it just sits there. Of course you see that wire hanging there so you'd have to hide your wires. But, and then the subwoofer is right behind the couch on the floor like I said, but yeah man, it, I think it's a solid sound bar. It's got solid sound, solid bass. Um, the, the front, okay, let's talk about the sound bar itself. Everything coming from the front it doesn't sound too narrow, but you can you can kind of feel and hear the narrowness or the narrowness of the sound bar because by default it is a sound bar, so that sound is limited to like three feet, three and a half feet, however long this thing is. That's what the sound is kind of limited to. Sometimes it can kind uh, uh, kind of sound kind of narrow, but for the most part, you're you actually are getting surround sound. So you're getting that center channel left, right. And then you're going to back, left, right, and then you got that bass in the rear. If I had a budget of $350, would I spend it on this sound bar again? My answer is yes. But also, you might feel like I might want a little bit more. So you gotta put some more, you know, you might have to crack open that piggy bank, homie, if you want that real rear Dolby Atmos. But right here, you're getting some pretty good stuff, man. I, I think I, I think I like it, man. So I could definitely recommend it. But like I said, you're spending $350, so you're getting $350 worth of home theater sound, baby. Like I said, I'm not an expert in this kind of stuff, but what I do know is I approve of this sound bar. Either way, y'all keep being good to each other, and I'll see you when I see you.